it is Sunday afternoon. Uh, no main channel video this morning. I released it on Friday and it was on making these drawers. Kind of an interesting project, I thought. There's, I don't think there's anything new about the way that I did the drawers with the folding miter. Uh, but I thought that using the router bit was kind of interesting. Because like I said in the video that like I've got other V-Groove bits, but I don't have any that have... Well, they try to make a sharp point on them, but they don't they don't they won't cut a sharp point like they won't cut a clean corner so that's the reason why i went with that rather than using the dado blade like i was originally going to do on the table saw i was going to make all the cuts there and um I had a question asking if you can do it with a regular blade well i mean the point of this was that you could decide on how deep the drawer needs to be and then you can make all the cuts at the same time with the blank right without adjusting anything whereas if you were going to do it on a table saw with a single blade which it can be done of course uh you would have to make adjustments you'd have to run all the cuts on one edge right and then make an adjustment to the fence very precisely and run all the cuts on the other like going the other direction this direction first then the other direction after and that would evolve readjusting the fence not that a you know it's not that big a deal especially if you have a sample made up to try it all right so yeah the other thing about it was the up down the up down up down up down i did that um it was just something that popped into my head as a way i could do this because uh, you know, here it was i had the 12 drawers i knew how much space i had here and i wanted to squeeze them all in and I said, well, it'd be nice to have no dividers. But then I thought if I left the dividers out completely, they might drag each other out when you're opening them. So I came up with that. And it's just very slightly wider than the drawer. So it, it helps, right? There's side to side play with each drawer as it's sitting in there, right? So they're not tight against each other. Therefore, they, they, they'll be less likely to pull each other out. And indeed, I... You know, I tried it several times and, and it's never happened. So it's even less likely to happen when there's actually something in there. Before we go down and look at the folding table, I thought I'd talk about something else I did yesterday. I made a new automatic switch for these three tools. They, well, what the automatic switch does is it turns on my cyclone vac when each of these tools is turned on so that you know, this will be the dust collection for these three tools. Plus, it will have an outlet for the CNC that I can just use with a hose to clean up. Or just general clean up in this area. Okay? So, this is a lot like the one that I have in my miter saw station. Um, that starts up the vacuum that's inside there when I start the miter saw. The only difference with this one is that it uses a solid state relay. And that uses a lot less, that requires a lot less voltage and current. So therefore, I was able to get a little bit of extra runtime at the end by adding a bigger capacitor. And I'll show that now. You turn on the, um, what is this? Bandsaw. <laughs> I'll turn it on for a second. Vacuum's running. And it kept running for about two seconds after I shut down the the um, bandsaw. I showed that back. The same thing with the with the dis with the belt sander. Came on. Now I'll turn it off. And you can see how long it runs after the thing is powered off. The same deal, of course, with the spindle sander. And the same run time when you shut it off. Okay, now we can get to the main event, which is the folding table. I discussed, I showed a little bit of in a previous video, or maybe two at this point. But I've been doing these small things, uh, kind of piecemeal in between. I haven't really been filming. I did film a little bit of this, and I'll, I'll show that. But first, I want to show you how it works. Um, this is the, in case you're, you're f like first time watching this, this is the top from my old CNC table that I made when I first got the CNC. 
After that, I well, recently I mounted the CNC on the wall, which was another one of those small projects. And that made the table redundant. I figured I'll take apart the table and use the top, which is a torsion box here, make it fold down so that I'd have an auxiliary work surface that it would be, and it would be in a place that's too inconvenient for me to leave it folded down. And I'll, sh I'll show you why here. So there's a clip up here and then it starts to come down. And then also the legs fold down. And they fold all the way down. So you can see the size of the table. It's not huge. And it's not really in a remarkably good location, but it would be very helpful when I'm cutting large pieces of plywood. I'll be able to use this as an infeed. Talked about that in the previous video. And also if I need this, like put together something that's wider and not so deep, something that wouldn't normally fit on my, my workbench, I could do it on this. Also, if I have two assemblies going at the same time, rather than use my table saw, which is what I've been doing for an, a, like a secondary work surface, I'll use this instead since it's very quick and easy to fold it down, All right? Now, um, what I mentioned that is in an inconvenient place, well, I, I don't have this cleaned up yet, but you can see that I can barely squeeze through here to get to the door to leave the shop. I'm just kidding. I'm not actually leaving. So yeah, yeah, it's quite a squeeze. So it wouldn't be convenient at all to leave this thing down. All right, now I'm going to talk a little bit about how I built it. The first thing I did was figure out how I was going to mount it on this door. This is a door covering my lumber rack and it slides sideways. So it still needs to do that. So I figured regular door hinges would work to hinge it down. And I put those on a narrow cleat to begin with to bump it out away from the door a little bit so that they would operate properly and also make it easier to put this thing together. And then I started stacking up stuff in front of that to set the table on. And as you can see, I found a use for that sustainer case that came with the domino machine. And then when I had it high enough, I got the table laid on top and I wiggled the hinges in place and got those lined up and drove the pins back in. And with the hinges in, of course, I could fold it up and see how it works and if it actually clears the top because I've been known to make measuring mistakes before. It's always good to check. Now I need a way to hold the door up in this uh, vertical position. And I figured a simple catch would work. And this is just a block of hardwood with a plastic strip. This is from a cutting board. And so it flexes easily. When I had that put together, I could fold the table back up again and mark on the clip where the stop has to be. And then I can get that put on. And as you can see, it holds the table in the upright position. Now, later I made a modification to that clip so that it's automatic. I don't have to push it, which was my intention from the beginning, but I just wanted to get this done. Like I was short on time when I was doing it. When I came back out here this morning, I made that modification and it's just the, you know, the slope, the front edge of that tab so that um, when I stand the door up, it automatically slips past and, you know, it comes around and hooks on the door. And for the legs, I wanted something simple again. I had pieces of three quarter inch plywood from the original table that I could use to make the legs. To make it hinge, I drilled a two inch hole and it has a two inch um, pivot. And that pivot is actually glued and screwed to the sides of the table. And what holds it in is a quarter inch ring on the outside. And, you know, as the table goes up, you can see that these things right here act as stops, All right? So the legs can't come any further. They also add support for the table rather than having all the weight on these um, pivots. Some of the weight will go on those and then a cross brace and I'll close it up and you can see that automatic uh, clip works. Uh, cross brace is just a piece of half inch plywood that's let in over here so that it's everything looks neat okay
yeah, happy with that. I'm not sure <laughs> at this point how much I'm going to use it, but I didn't spend a lot of time getting it done. I did spend a lot of time building the table to begin with, so I didn't want to waste it. I didn't want to try to, you know, put it somewhere else where it's not going to be used either. I figured I'd give it a shot here and see how it works. How, how are you? I'm fine. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm disgusted with my life and myself, but I'm not unhappy about that. How are you? Excellent. 